In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to use Neon's data portal. So feel free to open up a browser tab and follow along as we explore this great resource. So what we have here is data.neonscience.org. This is our data portal welcome page. And today we're going to focus on the explore data products page. So you can click on this explore button right here. And this will open up our explore data products page. This is your graphical user interface to access all of Neon's available data products. So uh, here in the middle, we have a bunch of uh, little tiles that have our individual data products. Over on the left side, we have a number of filters. Now, most of these are pretty self-explanatory, but the one I really wanna point out is the science team filter. So here at Neon, we break our data up into five different groups based on their science team. Uh, one being our airborne observation platform, that is our remote sensing data, hyperspectral, LIDAR, high resolution RGB camera imagery. And then we have things broken down into our aquatic and terrestrial teams. And within each one of those teams, those data are further subdivided into our instrument systems and our observation systems. So our instrument systems are uh, instruments you're probably familiar with, much like remote uh, temperature sensors, relative humidity, uh, things like that, anything that comes in, in in kind of a data stream of ones and zeros. And then our observation system is our team of expert scientists that are out there. Uh, I like to think of them as our boots on the ground. Those are the folks making direct observations such as uh, flora and fauna, presence and abundance, and uh, things like that. So within these five different science teams, you'll find our data sets uh, broken out into each one of these categories. Now, I think the most useful aspect of this web page is the search bar. So one uh, data product I use quite often for an example uh, is photosynthetically active radiation, or what we affectionately refer to as PAR. So this data set here, uh, you can see once you put in the search terms, it'll bring up uh, a new subset of filtered data products. There are actually uh, 81 different filtered data products for this particular search term, but the one we want uh, pops right up at the top. So uh, let's take a look at this tile here that we have in front of us, and this will give you all sorts of great information about this data product in particular. The first one I'm going to click on is this header up at the top. So if you click this, this is an active link to the data product description page. In here, you can find the uh, data product ID. This is a unique identifier for every one of our data products, and you'll get really familiar with these if you use Neon data for any length of time. We have a description and an abstract uh, for this data set. Our citation, so much like uh, any other scientist in the community, you're welcome to reference our work and to use our publicly accessible data. Uh, please just cite us if you do so. It helps us track our usage and our funding agency, the National Science Foundation, really loves to see all of these amazing papers that are being published using Neon data. If you keep scrolling down, you'll have some details about the collection and processing, but the documentation here, these PDFs that pop up, are probably your best resource for finding out really detailed information about these data products. If you keep scrolling down, uh, you'll find our issue log. So we have one of these for every data product, and you can take a look to see if there are unresolved or resolved issues, and you can even filter by a particular site. So if you're only using one site, you might want to look to see, uh, are there any known issues with this particular data product for this site? Uh, if you click on one of these issues, it'll give you a, a nice description of what's going on, and it'll tell you uh, if we've resolved it or not, and what we've done to resolve that issue. Uh, I'm gonna skip past this uh, availability section for just a moment to get to the visualization. So many of our data products, especially the instrument data products, have a visualization available. This is a great way to take a look at the data uh, before you actually download any, just to get a sense of if this is the data product that you're really looking for. You can visualize by different sites and even our different sensor positions. Uh, if we have multiple sensors at our individual sites, you can pull up different variables, such as the quality control metrics, uh, et cetera. So I'm gonna close this page and go back to the Explore Data Products page. From here, I'll click on the Download Data button, which will open up a new interface for us to explore and download these data. So once you open it up, it'll come in this uh, summary view, 
But my preferred view is to click on the View by Site button. And here you can see uh, the blue rectangles indicate a month for which the data product is available at this given site. So for Abbey or Rickery, you can see the months that they're available. Uh, the gray boxes are either before or after the data were available, or for some data products, they're not collected every month. So they might not be available uh, for every single month. But this gives you a good indication of when and where the, this data product is available across the NEON Observatory. So you can click on these rows if you want to select a site or more. Uh, once you have a site selected, you can filter down by the date range that you want to select. So it defaults to the entire date range, but let's say we just want a, a couple months worth of data. So I'll go from September to November of 2019. So you can see how I am filtering using these options here. As you start to narrow in on your desired data set, uh, the Download Explorer will give you an estimated size for your download. This is the unzipped size, so uh, your download itself will actually be quite a bit smaller than this because it comes compressed. But once you unzip it, it'll be about this much data. So once you are happy with your selection, you can click on the Next button. And we'll ask you a few more questions such as, do you want to include documentation? Sure, why not? I always include those PDFs because they're helpful uh, at one point or another. And which package do you want? The basic package includes all of the data that you'll need to um, you know, take a look at the data and see what the values are. But the expanded data package includes a much greater depth of information about our quality control metrics and what we've done to ensure that we're delivering you the highest quality data possible for your research. So I uh, almost always select the expanded package, um, but this can be a much larger file, especially for the instrument systems if you're going over months and months of data. Finally, we'll ask you to agree to the citation policies. Uh, so you'll agree to that, and we'll even give you a suggested citation here on this final page. So in this confirmation page, you can review uh, exactly what you're going to download here. And when you're ready, you can click the Download Data button. Well, that is everything you need to know about how to download data from NEON. Uh, of course, if you have any questions, we're more than happy to help you with that. At the bottom of every one of our pages is a Contact Us form. So if you scroll all the way down and go down to the uh, bottom header here, click on Contact Us. This will open up our form where you can submit any inquiry that's relevant to your research. and We will direct your question to the most appropriate subject matter expert to ensure that we can get you the most accurate and complete information possible so that you can continue your research with confidence. So feel free to reach out to us. Thank you for your time and best of luck with your research.